We're coming down from some fast solar wind that brought aurora to high latitudes, and our sun gets ready for Halloween. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather calms down just a bit from last week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we don't have any scary active regions in Earth view this week, but we do have a coronal hold in the south that's been rotating through the Earth strike zone. That has been sending us some fast solar wind and has brought some gorgeous aurora shows down to high latitudes, not quite mid-latitudes, but we do have chances for some solar storms in about a week. If we take a look at the east limb of the sun, you can see some gorgeous prominence eruptions and solar storms launches there in the north. This is from, from some regions that have not yet rotated into Earth view, but they will in the next few days, which means in about a week they could be sending us some Earth-directed solar storms to give us aurora photographers a better chance, especially down at mid-latitude, so keep your fingers crossed. But meanwhile, as we take a look at the rest of the Earth-facing disk, look at that happy sun. Do you see that smiling face? In fact, as we take a look, let me just do this and then maybe do this here and kind of something like that and voila, it looks like the sun is getting ready for Halloween. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, as you can see from the X-ray flux, we're sitting just below the seafloor, which actually is pretty good. That means the solar flux is definitely in the triple digits right now. We have been popping some low-level C-class flares, but it's not really enough to give us any radio blackouts. So amateur radio operators on Earth's day side, you're probably noticing a little bit of noise on the bands, but it's not too bad. And these conditions will easily continue over the next couple days, but that solar flux and the X-ray flux is expected to ramp up a bit because we do have a couple new active regions that will be rotating into Earth view over the next couple days and they look to be a bit more flare active. So I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing that flare risk climb just a tad and we're just going to have to wait and see if it's also going to be solar storm time. Switching to our solar storm conditions, as you can see, the last time we actually hit storm levels was clear back on the 22nd. This was due to some fast solar wind that kind of had some side swiping solar storms in there as well. That bumped us up to storm levels and brought some gorgeous aurora down to the top part of the mid latitudes, but it didn't stay for all that long. We quieted down and then bumped back up again on the 24th up to active conditions. And this kept aurora mainly at high latitudes, but had some gorgeous shows at high latitudes. Since then, we've been calming down and calming down, and we are beginning now to ramp back up as we get closer and closer to Halloween, because that jack-o'-lantern set of coronal holes is going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone here starting around the 29th. We could easily bump up to storm levels and stay that way for the next couple days, possibly in through Halloween before things settle down. And this is good news to Aurora photographers. It could be a spooky trick-or-treat. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun just a little bit from the side. And as we take a look at Stereo's view, well, you can see that jack-o'-lantern and that happy face smiling right at you there. But if you look to the east of that, you can actually see some active regions both in the north and in the south. You can even see the solar storm eruptions going off in the north. These are the prominence eruptions that were just so beautiful in Earth's view. But behind it, there's definitely some activity. So it looks like we could actually be seeing some big flare players maybe rotating into Earth view here in about two or three days, maybe four days at most. And we could be once again getting solar storm producers. So perhaps the sun's nap is finally going to go away. And if we reach into the beginning of November, we're going to start seeing more activity again. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of the new moon phase on our way to the first quarter, and by the 31st, the moon will still be only about 40% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, now's a good time to catch those dark skies. 
Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that fast solar wind from that set of happy face coronal holes that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone here over the next couple of days. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 60% chance of a major storm. And this could easily last in through the end of the month and possibly into the first before things begin to settle down. Now, mid latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions but we do have up to about a 25% chance of a minor storm. So this is good news for aurora photographers, both at high latitudes and mid latitudes. We could definitely be in a, for a bit of a show in through the holiday and possibly in through the first of the month before things begin to settle down. So definitely keep your batteries charged. Switching to our solar flared particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything continues to be in the green. When it comes to big solar flares, we have no risk for radio blackouts right now because we don't have any active regions that are giving us any big flares. And this should make GPS users very happy. We only have about a 5% chance of a radio blackout on Earth's day side, and so things are looking pretty good. Meanwhile, the solar flux continues to be around 125, and it looks like things could begin to ramp up even more here as we move into the beginning of the month. This is due to some new regions that are gonna be rotating into Earth view over the next few days, and that means that we could get an increase in flare risk, but it's just kind of hard to tell as of yet. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders just kind of expect that things are going to be about the status quo. We shouldn't get too much noise on the radio bands, but it could increase just a little bit over this next week. The week following is when we're going to really get interested to see whether these new regions grow or fade with time. Meanwhile, we're still sitting at D1 normal range. We don't have any issues for radiation storms right now, and that's going to continue easily over this next week. So all you frequent flyers, you're in the clear. So the space weather this week puts on a bit of a happy face. We do have a set of coronal holes that are gonna be rotating in through the Earth strike zone over the next couple days, and it could bring Aurora down to mid latitudes easily through the Halloween holiday and possibly into the beginning of November before things begin to calm down. So Aurora photographers, you should be smiling as much as the sun is right now and enjoy that. Keep your batteries charged because we could get Aurora even down to mid latitudes. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Well, you know, solar flux is staying up into the triple digits. Then we don't have any big flare players right now on the earth facing disc. And it's hard to say whether we're going to get some new ones rotating into earth view over the next couple days. So cross your fingers that radio blackouts continue to remain a uh, low risk for now. And that should be uh, pretty happy, keep you pretty happy on those bands. Now also you GPS users, well, it's time to celebrate as well for you, except for the fact that we've got that fast solar wind coming. On Earth's day side, you know, GPS reception should be pretty good. But as we go to the night side, as soon as that solar storm hits from that fast solar wind, expect your GPS reception to get a bit dicey anywhere near Aurora or near dawn and dusk. And if you happen to be a drone pilot, as soon as that solar storm hits, be sure to calibrate your magnetometers often. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.